Howdy over you delicious people. I'm here today to review Power Rangers Dino Fury episodes 12 through 14. So really coming back to this because like here's the thing like I uh I was like I I want to come back to Power Rangers weirdly. I want to try to figure out a way how to get back there. And then it was like, oh, hey, like I found out coincidentally that the Power Rangers Dino Fury episodes were to be up. And then I was like, OK, well, yeah, but I'm not quite sure how to fit these back in. Uh, maybe I might upload these like every other day or something. So I, I was just trying to figure out where to fit this in because there was so much going on uh, right around the time where this kind of came back. And I was like, hmm, I don't know if I'm going to get to this. Uh, so, going into uh, episodes 12, 13, and 14, I would say that uh, these episodes have to be like a, a thumbs up episode. Uh, even though really there's a lot more focus seemingly on the Power Rangers like uh, out of costumed story. And it seems a lot less focused on the whole like them actually fighting any kind of things today <laughs> within three episodes uh really the thumbnail will also tell you that uh episode 14 lord zed does return uh which is really just a fun thing but of course when they have to have somebody return all of a sudden now they have to go and they end up having to go into that past footage to go and just be like oh hey here yeah uh, Lord Zed, he was a really important character that you guys eventually have to go back into those good old seasons and, uh, watch to see, like, especially when going through Mighty Morphin, which is on, uh, Netflix consistent, or consistently anyways, like, you might as well check out Lord Zed. Like, I don't know if there was a strategy or there was a plan there or what that was, but anyways, uh, it was good to see Lord Zed back in, uh, back in town, so to speak. Uh, episode 13 was, uh, love making, matching, uh, matchmaker or whatever love boat for episode. Uh, um, like some cringe going on there. Uh, there's always some cringe when you have some Power Rangers episodes. Uh, like, especially when it was episode 12, I was like, Man, they do something good here. They have a good theme, and I like kind of where this is heading. But a lot of people will be uh, kind of missing a bub, uh, buzz blast being a little bit of a focus. Like, I think here. So here's the thing: was the problem really just Jay Borg and Jane? And so they figured that just going and having them uh, transition to a different kind of theme would all of a sudden have people just be happier about these shows. Because they had, like, Jane and J-Borg in here and for, like, one sequence out of, the, like, three episodes. And I was completely fine with that. Uh, I'm fine with having these people in the show, both Jane and J-Borg. Just figure out a better way to use them. Like, just have them kind of, maybe, if they're going to be, uh, like, have them try to get the, the Power Rangers exclusive. Like... Uh, maybe go and, uh, figure out a way to have these kind of be, uh, like, trying to get some kind of, um, like, have them possibly be, like, the lowest lane to the Power Rangers Superman. Have them, have them do that. Uh, like, have them be incorporated in the story. I'm not just saying, like, completely eliminate these characters. Like, these characters weren't that bad. It was just that, like... There were certain episodes where the characters were like a bit of a, a bit much. Um, but like that would just be in one instance, not in several. Like it was just one instance where I was like, man, like they use these characters crappy. But again, I don't have that problem in the one episode that I saw them in. Um, I'm not saying for these people to lose their jobs, like just figure out a way to, to put them in the show better, uh, in all actuality. But so, uh, so yeah, I feel like I kind of covered my basis, uh, for most of these, for most of the episodes, 
so teeing it up, what is this? What are these episodes about? Uh, so this is technically a little bit more going in depth of some stuff. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, go ahead and check these out. Uh, overall, I would say, uh, good, uh, good. Uh, if there was ever a time where I was like, man, these episodes suck. Uh, like I feel like kind of indifferent now. Um, to where I could just be like, okay, it seems like most of these episodes are interesting. Uh, just, I would like more Power Ranger parts. Uh, where hopefully they'd be doing something different because obviously I think the main reason why they're uh, really just stretching out the uh, Power Rangers depowered stories is because they probably don't have much to go with action sequences or anything really new to deliver in action sequences. So they're just kind of forced to now just like, hey, just stretch out the, the depowered stories because we got nothing uh, as far as like fighting sequences, there's nothing new we can bring to the table, so just stretch those other stories uh, is what it really feels like. Um, if anything, when we have the the Megazord in episode 14, uh, the Megazord actually looked cool. I actually liked that variation of the Megazord, and it feels like they tried to do something different with the sword, and so bravo to that! I don't like the fact that they continue to recycle uh, other monster costumes from other episodes and just kind of plop them down again. But uh, an end result is to also have gotten a really strong monster in the end. So, uh, like, it's just kind of this back and forth kind of tug of war of just like, well... Uh, but the end goal of bringing those monsters back, uh, because they're more amped up or whatever, uh, that seem like a much more unstoppable villain I can get behind. Um, it's just how, like, we just have to basically just recycle certain, like, monsters that you already either know their weakness or just, like, recycle certain monsters that honestly are just crappy monsters anyways. <laughs> Just come on, like, you could come up with, like, the ones, monsters, whatever costumes that people actually liked and bring those back. Um, you could have brought back the one, uh, uh, the one guy that was Goldar for a while. You could have, you could have brought him back. Just be like, hey man, like, here's a real threat here, uh, coming back. Uh, cause that guy had a, like a storyline of stretching and whatever. And I would have liked to have him come back. Uh, whatever that guy's name was. I don't remember. Uh, the guy who I ended up saying was like the Goldar of the story. You could have had him brought back. Uh, you could also, uh, like, I, I guess I did like overall, like the, the wolf, the wolf gang monster. Uh, but can we not have that weakness, like, explain? God, they had to bring that back in the other episode to, to do in the thing and the stuff and the, the... But anyways, so let's... Yeah, so let's get into spoilers. Let's just go and double five it. Uh, let's get into this thing called Spoiler Time, Spoiler Time. It's about that time we get to spoil this epi these episodes. Um, so, yeah, so... Episode 12. Episode 12 is to have a gym theme, which immediately I'm like, hmm, yay. Uh, I liked this. But then all of a sudden, when things are to be presented in the show, uh, a cool theme, but then you ruin it by having a uh, seemingly character that doesn't know what she's talking about. It seems like she's just saying lines or someone's feeding her lines like she's earwigging it or something and it just feels like she is to like not even know what she's saying it feels like it feels like this person has never <laughs> like did this person take any cues from like a personal trainer anywhere because when all she has is like this barbie doll set of like three different lines which I get 
like the end goal of it was to eventually uh, have eventually Zato realize that, that it seems that she is to say the same thing to everybody. Like, I get that, but this girl just comes off so, like, uh, pull the string Barbie doll esh, where really it's to have her, like, you could have her have same certain lines, but then in between that, she has nothing else to deliver anybody, which just seems like a con or ripoff or whatever, where it's like, she could have said words, like, because I think she ends up saying, like, form a lot. Uh, and I'm just like, you could have just said, like, technique. Uh, you could have, like, uh, like, it just feels like there's something about this that feels just so, like, disingenuous that I could have never have thought that any number of any of these people could have ever been in a gym in their life. <laughs> like, there's, all the, the, like, the, like, you would think that these people would have to work out to look good, right? Like, not all of them get, like, skinny just by, like, dieting. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, so let's, er, let's, let's back it up. So, Izzy is to, of course, talk to her dad in the beginning of this episode to desperately want to be a part of this gym, which I'm sure is going to work out perfectly, right? No. Because they end up bottling this all in this one episode, so I'm like, oh, okay. So, this was to be a meaningless thing to them to not really have to actually sound all that accurate because this is going to be a quick shot in the pan like thing to eventually just be one episode where it doesn't really matter uh like because eventually this whole gym thing just becomes a money-making pyramid scheme that doesn't have to seem legit it just seems to have to be legit until like uh like how can they squeeze the money out of this which could have really just became like anything you could have just had like a used car lot and you could have almost said like the same thing to everybody and, like, you could use this, like, anywhere. The same kind of approach to anything. Um, somebody gets a new job. You could do the same thing. Uh, <laughs> nice form. Nice technique. Yeah. Good washing that, uh, that, uh, that thing there. Anyways, um, so Izzy is to go and beg her father for an extension on her allowance. And so Carlos is to give that to her. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, how is it that these people have so much time for all of this stuff and to also do their buzz blast thing? And also, didn't we see that, like, a hobby uh, was to be able, through his buzz blast thing, be able to pay for a $900 uh Kitar, and I'm like, how much is a gym membership? Because, like, in their world, because, like, I had had a gym membership, and it's really not that expensive, and why is it that, like, uh, Izzy isn't doing, like, Buzz Blast interviews to eventually, like, here's how we could have incorporated Buzz Blast in here, to just, like, Izzy could have said, like, hey, uh, I need more uh, video choices, like, I, uh, like, I really want to come up with some kind of, like, she could have come up with pitches to come to Buzz Blast and just be like, hey, I want to kind of pitch ideas because it seems like I'm really not getting much of ideas or I'm, like, not getting any work. So, hey, let me go and let me pitch ideas to Jane and Jborg and BAM! Like, here's how we can use Jane and Jborg to benefit the show to have, like, these characters just kind of pitch ideas to her because doesn't any place does that, d does things like that anyways? Watch, like, the Spider-Man movies, like the Tobey Maguire ones, and you have people eventually just bugging Jonah to pitch ideas. Why isn't anybody doing this? Uh, here's my uh, kind of pitch to this show. Write that in there. If you're ever going to do a second season of this, which you probably won't. But anyways, so... Uh, 
so anyways, so Izzy is to be able to afford this gym, and Zato is like, hey man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll go, I'll go, uh, cause like Zato just wants to be the guy who's kind of incorporated in a lot of like certain people's stories, and like, and I don't know what kind of thing that that weirdly is, but it's a thing always. So, uh, eventually Zato and, and, uh, Izzy go to this gym. And so we end up meeting, I think, Fern, who eventually is to be used in the very next episode, as well as, uh, a guy named Adrian, who's coincidentally to also be used in another episode, which I'm like, well, I can like that like continuity of things where eventually like we're probably to have these two people after the next episode getting like they get the boot after that or whatever but still like at least there was some kind of like connection between whatever anyways pushing on so now uh we end up having uh the first free session thing that these people are going to and so, really, Coach Bella teaches them absolutely nothing. Uh, basically, when she comes in there, she's like, well, hey, let's go and let's start to lift weights. And Izzy is just like, well, shouldn't we stretch first? Like, shouldn't we just have some kind of stretching where we can kind of free stretch? And... Like, Coach Bella's like, well, that's a great idea, because I don't know jack sh about gym stuff. And so, after they get their stretch on, they go out and they start doing equipment things. And, like, uh, some guys do some, like, clean and jerks, and, like, uh, some people are to be, like, squatting. And, uh, like, uh, we end up having uh, certain people with, uh, with certain kind of, like, kettle bells or whatever the one goofy like thing that you have like this arm thing like i would just honestly have used like a dumbbell instead of like a like that kind of goofy thing that they have there but i guess it's just hey man we just have all this equipment lying around uh because yeah so and so coach bella just goes around and it's basically just barbie doll uh wind up tell people that everybody has great form and eventually she ends up kind of queuing up and picking certain people that are say, Oh yeah, you're the hotshot of this gym. Oh, Hey, you're the best uh, athlete here. Oh, Hey, like you are just like, uh, your performance is just top notch or whatever goofy thing that she has to kind of toss into feel different, but everything feels the exact same. Everything is, everyone has spectacular form, and that's all that I hear through every time that she used to, like, I'm like, I'm sorry, so she corrects nobody. What if somebody sucks? What if, obviously, somebody sucks on purpose? I don't know how many gym videos you would see where somebody just does a thing of equipment horrifically wrong, and there is not one moment where this girl is to correct anybody on doing anything, uh... Or to really just show anybody how to use one lick of any machine. Because that would be accurate. <laughs> so, like, it just feels like these people just grabbed all this equipment. And it feels like she is to just kind of point out that, like, Hey, you're doing this thing without me having to tell you. Because, like, it just feels people randomly grab things. So, uh, anyways... So Bella is to basically tell everybody that they're the best, number one, great, spectacular, whatever. And so then Coach Bella is to say, like, hey, guys, I'm doing a private personal session that is to require to you to have a special uniform on. And so you have to pay for that also. And so all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we end up starting to see, like, the money stack up here. And so... Uh, all of a sudden guys are coming in, they're like, well, like, hey, like, I don't think I'm going to have the money for, like, this uniform. And I'm like, I'm sorry, like, I would never have it in a gym where I think that you need to buy a special uniform to do any part of a gym. 
Like, if you need an exclusive member badge dealio, it's like, I'm sorry, then I don't think I need to get it. I don't think I need to be in a gym that has to do that. Am I going to be working for this job? Or am I going to be working for this gym? No, then I don't need a uniform. Like, if anything, I wouldn't see a gym that I would be that diehard to want to buy their clothes. Like, I have my own, thank you. Like, uh, like if anything, like, uh, like, I can understand, like, because you don't have to pay for certain classes. Like, you can just show up on the gym and, like, they'll just have this thing going on. And if you join, you join. If you don't, you don't. Like, go ahead and bang and clang and whatever that you're going to do on whatever equipment you're going to do. Because uh, unless you want a, a personal trainer thing that eventually is going to be focusing on you losing weight uh, or whatever, or you gaining muscle or doing whatever you want specifically to do. But it's anyway, so eventually Adrian is to realize that he does not have money to get this uniform. And so now we're bizarrely doing this, like, just seemingly goofy thing where all of a sudden Coach Bell is to say, like, well, hey, Adrian, how about you give me your watch and, like, I'll give you the uniform and then you can pay me back and I'll give you back the watch. I'm like, that seems like such a goofy con artist thing that you would think that Coach Bella would just be like, well, I just pawned this watch. <laughs> People are stupid and they give me all these... Uh, these things for absolutely free. I mean, actually, you shouldn't even have bought this uniform. <laughs> it's just a pyramid scheme. <laughs> so, anybody who is to, like, be interested in to... Going and wanting to do a gym will eventually be turned around by that fact because of this show. What a crappy thing that you did there. Thanks for, like, having a generation of people deciding to not want to go to a gym because they feel like they're going to get ripped off or they're going to get conned out of their money or whatever. But then I guess they end up turning it around at the end of this episode to just have Izzy go and show people how to stretch at the end of this. But still, like, that basically is to ruin the whole gym theme of the thing and put a gym in a negative light and you for doing that. Uh, I don't like that at all. <laughs> I just realized that. Uh, thank you for making a gym feel like a horrible place. Uh, <laughs> basically what you did. Uh, so Adrian is to consistently be worried about that whole watch thing. He's like, that was really like an important thing for me. Like, uh, it was my grandfather's watch, and it was the last thing that he ever gave to me. And so, we also have Izzy, who had ripped uh, her uh, uniform in battle while she was, uh, like, I guess, uh, fighting uh, some henchmen, uh, like, in her, like, gear, so she tore. And I'm like, yeah, finally something here. Uh, we also have all the Power Rangers kind of fighting uh, this fog shell. Uh, good fight sequence with the fog shell. Eventually, the fog shell eventually disappears. Uh, I think in this episode, we also have... I think the hacking uh, thing comes into play in this episode, correct? Uh, the hacking of the hotline, where eventually the villains commandeer the hotline to eventually come on as certain other rangers. And I'm not quite sure if that this is this episode or the next. Um, I think it might be this episode. So uh, eventually we have Slyther who is to do different voices. And yeah, I think it's this episode. And so... Uh, Slyther is to do the voice of the Red Ranger, and he sounds just like him, of course. And so, because basically the Power Rangers are in the, the voiceover studio anyways. They might as well sound like him, right? So, 
uh, they commandeer the hotline uh, to eventually kind of redirect the things or to tell people that uh, certain things are happening when they actually aren't. Um, and so eventually this, uh, this fog shell ends up coming into the fray and is to disorient all the rangers and uh, eventually uh, Slyther is to come on in and just kind of confuse the rangers to think that uh, it could be either an actual ranger or it could actually be Slyther and it kind of gets them confused and disoriented and whatever. Uh, kind of really enjoyed that. That was fun. Uh, we also have a moment where eventually they use those, like, that weird, uh, one-armed, uh, like, power-up thing somewhere in these episodes. And I thought, like, every single ranger now having that specialty thing was kind of cool. Even though I'm still getting sick of the, the, hey, let's do the goofy thing with the sword with a con, con, con thing that they have to do there all the time um because they have to have their little action figures and put it in the sword and remind people that th that's still a toy that exists that you could probably buy it somewhere <laughs> remind people about the that sword once again so that way you can have some merchandising thing because that's i think all they can do with this sword stuff so really they just kind of merchandise the crap out of that right uh so eventually uh, after the, uh, the fog shell is to vanish and eventually so seemingly does, uh, the whole hacking thing because eventually they kind of get rid of that too. So what ends up is to happen is Izzy is to go off to, uh, go to, uh, pay for this new uniform and we end up finding out the real scheme of this coach bella that oh my god like coach bella is to be so like she must be the dumbest person that i like this girl is to basically be a person that tells like izzy this random person all of her secrets and then goes back over again it's like Oh no, but I'm like, I lie to everybody, but I don't lie to you. <laughs> like, what, what kind of dumb person is Coach Bella? And to the point that she have like, she, like, I think that like, it just makes the people that were involved with Coach Bella dumb also. And to where like, what was she even teaching them? The art of nothing? <laughs> and, like, these people just ate it up? They're like, oh, man, we're going to just train ourselves. And, like, we, I just want to be in the vicinity of Coach Bella while she's telling me good form because I don't think she's ever even, like, shown me a thing to do. <laughs> and then really looking back on it now... Like, all of a sudden, Coach Bella is telling me, yeah, she never really wanted to do any lick of anything because that was her mastermind planned all along. <laughs> to just be this horrible person that is to try to figure out a way to collect money out of people and never seemingly have one iota of real, like, training to show a lick of anybody. <laughs> Because, like, did she even have a video of something where she was, like, training people? Like, was that even a thing in this show? Because I don't, I didn't see that at all. So, Izzy was kind of, like, swindled into this thing because she obviously was, she was dumb. This character is dumb. Uh, <laughs> as well as anybody who's to go to this gym, they end up being dumb also. Um, and then eventually it just, like, I don't know, we just have these characters that eventually, like, just kind of just seem dumb over time, uh, especially with even episode, like, I don't know why these people are so curious, like, uh, like, I don't know, there's some episodes, like, the whole thing about, like, somebody, like, hey, are you having problems farting? Uh, okay, what? 
like, <laughs> like the one episode where it was like, hey, does your stomach hurt? Are you having problems farting? You having problems tooting it out? And the person is just like, no, like I was just in a battle. Or <laughs> like, right, like I, I just don't feel good. Like my emotions just like I'm not there. Like I'm just sad today. And they're like, oh, so you're sad so you don't have to fart? And like, okay, sure. Uh, but anyways, so Izzy eventually decides that she's, instead of buying a new uniform, is to go and buy uh, Adrian's watch back to give to Adrian because it's a good thing to do. And so Izzy just decides that she's going to pull her membership and get the heck out of there. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, a lot of those, like, gym memberships are to be, like, a monthly kind of thing. Uh, like, didn't she tell this person that she's not going to re-sign up next month? Uh, did she mention that she was going to cancel her membership? Like, uh, is she just going to, like, did weirdly this gym just all of a sudden is to be a pay by opening up your wallet thing? Man, does this seem some freaking con artist like stuff maneuver here? Like, hey, just pay with cash. Just give me cash and like everything is to be covered. Weirdly. Uh that seems weird. So at the end of this episode, Izzy is to go and create her own uh training thing, which uh eventually when she kind of does this, this feels like kind of like Cobra Kai. Or eventually, uh, the one, uh, the one Cobra Kai teacher eventually goes and just has all his kids go to this one park and train. And I'm like, okay, I can see where this is kind of taking some things from Cobra Kai. Instead of going to a gym, they can kind of work out in this forest. And, like, if anything, if they had kind of, like, some playground stuff, they could probably go and do, like, chin-ups and... Like, there's certain kind of workouts that you can probably just do outside and whatever, or just add some kind of playground and whatever, and be able to kind of get a decent workout. And yeah, you won't be lifting certain kind of weights, or uh, you won't have the protection of certain kind of equipments, but that's the price you pay for free, I guess. So, episode 13. So, episode 13 is to be the matchmaker episode where it seems like these guys are working out, they're kind of jogging it out, and so uh, it seems that all of a sudden Javi is to mention that uh, Izzy is, like, so two episodes with Izzy as technically the focus? Like, man, like, I guess we, like, like, we kind of skip the whole kind of trading it up kind of thing, where it's like, Hey, is he for this one? And is he for the other one? Like, I think uh, episode 14 has technically some Ollie stuff in there. Maybe because he's the only one really left. So he's kind of the focus character. But like, there's nothing really going on like in his side story. Uh, whatever. Anyways. So episode 13. So Javi is to, is to see that uh, Izzy is to be putting her hair differently and evidently she's to finally be putting on some body deodorant and so Javi's like uh like what why all of a sudden the change uh Izzy and Izzy's like I'm not telling you and so eventually she ends up saying like hey you're not wearing deodorant uh so all of a sudden immediately Izzy is to be working technically doing some kind of obstacle course thing with Adrian. And so Javi's like, oh, I figured it out. Immediately, I'm like, oh, yeah, you didn't figure sh out, uh, Javi. <laughs> you figured out nothing. Because uh, Javi was like, oh, man, yeah, like, uh, Izzy, and, uh, Izzy and Adrian, like, I guess that was to really just tell us in the last episode that... Uh, cause Izzy decided to buy Adrian's watch that, yeah, there, there's going to be a relationship connection here. And I'm like, no, if anything, like, I think Izzy just did that because it was a nice thing to do and connecting those two together was probably going to eventually just, uh, have us think immediately, oh, relationship, right? 
So Javi all of a sudden is pushing Adrian and Izzy together, weirdly, because uh, he has nothing, I guess, to do with his life and his character, because why would he? <laughs> he is basically just now brother to Izzy, and that's all he really is, right? So he has nothing going on in his own personal story to give us something different here. Instead of, like, no, like, I'm Izzy brother. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, like, that's all we have to focus on. So, uh, so eventually Adrian, or, Adrian is to be set up to go and forced, a forced date with Izzy. Uh, and so, uh, eventually what happens is Slyther is to go and steal Adrian to have him uh, be taken to area 60 or 50. Six, what is it? What are, What is their hideout? Uh, area 62. There we go. Um, so. <clears throat> excuse me. So. Uh, so eventually what ends up happening is that. Uh, Javi and Izzy are to go to this one spot, and so eventually, uh, we find out that Izzy and Fern are sitting together. I'm like, here's the real relationship here, because something was to be kind of like, uh, like set up weirdly to where it's just like, oh, okay, so... Was there some goofy agenda that they were brewing all along for this character? And that doesn't seem right to me. Like, why does this seem to be, like, some kind of goofy forced thing? Like, just let it, like, like, why does relationships have to be focused with this Power, Power Ranger thing? Like, I like relationships in Power Ranger shows, but, like, something about this just kind of seemed weird. Um... No offense to a certain kind of community. Like, I'm just meaning that there was some kind of weird kind of agenda thing going on here. And I I didn't like that agenda part of it. Uh, but anyways, so... Uh, like, they could have just had this kind of just all of a sudden just pop out of nowhere. And just like, oh, hey! Like, no, it seems like there was some kind of weird goal in line that they were doing here. And that I don't like that at all. Um... It was some kind of weird, like, trying to, like, figure out. I don't know. It was weird. Uh, but believe me, I liked the end result, but there was some kind of cringe kind of tied to that also. We'll get to that. So, uh, so Javi and Izzy are at this place, and so uh, Javi is to grab Fern and is to just say, like, uh, well, hey, how about you and me split out of here? Uh, and say that we're gonna, like, go somewhere together. And Fern is like, well, I only date girls. So, immediately you're just kind of... <laughs> you're hinting where the story is already going. You're saying that Adrian is going to be wasting some time uh, making his way to Izzy. So, Adrian eventually makes his way to Izzy... And so Izzy could kind of take a whiff out that uh, Adrian is acting fairly differently or out of character because weirdly Adrian is confessing his love to a woman that he has only probably been in one episode with or just really just gotten to the point where it's like, why would this person confess their love when this is probably their first maybe date? Uh... Quick to the gun, quick to the quick to the gun. There, gun, whatever, whatever quick gun person there could be in the world. Billy the Kid, I don't know. So, quick draw. That that's where I was going with. I was going with quick quick draw. So, Izzy is to of course shoot uh, Adrian down and just be like, you know what? Like, Adrian, you're seeming wildly weirdly differently. And then so. We forcefully end up having Slyther having to show up and just say, well, hey, you're going to get Adrian back, but you guys now need to give me, like, a huge container of, of Sporex. 
uh, so that way we can trade for that. And so the Power Rangers are immediately just like, well, yeah, we'll give them this uh, Spore X case. Uh, and we'll use one of our, like, our nifty action figure things to come up with a solution for this to kind of figure out this whole double situation and make it look like we're going to give them this container, but not really. It's going to trick them in the end to just have uh, Void Knight just being just all ticked. So, if I even said that correctly, is Void Knight? Yeah? I don't know. Uh, it, it's me kind of reintroducing myself with these characters. So it's, it's been a while. Uh, so they end up going and they end up offering this container to, of course, Slyther. And he takes it like a fish on a hook under water or whatever. So he goes and he takes it and he brings it to Void Knight. And then they end up getting Adrian back. And then Void Knight is like, oh my god, you guys got the container of the the Sporex? Wow. Like, I'm so surprised. I'm so amazed. And then all of a sudden, the barrel of stuff just vanishes. And he's like, oh, I'm not surprised. I'm, uh, I am surprised. I am amazed that you guys would fail yet again. <laughs> like, And then he, like, swats him or whatever. Uh, so, really, the second episode is to re-bring back... Fog shell for eventually him to just kind of get uh, Megazorded out and eventually have this character get killed off. So, like, this character was to just get, like, man, are we kind of stretching out these monsters in all honesty? But, like, he ended up doing something really interesting in the other episode. But this one, he was just kind of fed up to the, uh, fed out to the Rangers for them to just, just uh, take him down, murder him off. Uh, so... So, really nothing really interesting going on in episode 14 as far as, far as like, Power Ranger stuff. Uh, it's kind of, like, trickery and... I don't know, I wasn't really all that impressed. So, uh, so episode now 14. So, we really tie 14 into Lord Zed coming in. There's a lot of focus on that. So, we end up having to introduce this character called Regal to get us Lord Zed. And so I'm just like, okay, like, you know what? Like, uh, this seems interesting. This seems like, uh, that eventually they have to bring up the fact, uh, of the previous Power Ranger seasons of how powerful Lord Zed is, how eventually Lord Zed uh, had dissolved because of the whole, like, Zordon thing, and <laughs> we end up having Ollie, who's like, well, is there any way to recreate the Lord, uh, the, the Zordon thing? And obviously, like, Solon is like, no, <laughs> we don't have another Zor Zodar, uh, Zordon character that can sacrifice himself. Sorry, kid, it's not gonna happen this day. <laughs> So, Lord Zed is to come back, but he has this necklace, uh, this, uh, this kind of, this dog chain on him that, I guess, supposedly in some other Power Ranger season, they would have this, this collar on, uh, one of these characters, and I'm like, oh, well, that's a nice callback, like, if anybody really cared about whatever that collar thing was, like, I'm sure people would just be excited about that for, like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, because I watched that show and blah, 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 blah. Uh, like, for me, I was just like, Lord's Ed, and that's all that mattered in my life. Uh, but, yeah, so, episode 14. So, uh, so really, Lord Zed is just to pop in just eventually kind of uh, seem to be a big threat of things. And so Regal and uh, Lord Zed end up just kind of popping down. And so eventually what ends up happening is all the Rangers end up getting knocked out in this episode. So they're kind of like sleepy or whatever. Uh, I don't think there's much of like actual side story going on here in this episode besides there being uh quite possibly a halloween party and so 
uh, people have to kind of come up with an idea for their Halloween costume, and I think that's about it. Um, yeah, like, that's the only thing that comes to mind, because it's, like, the focus is, like, Zed, Zed, and that's it. So, anyways, so... Eventually, Ollie goes back to uh, the Dino Henge, I believe. And so he gets some kind of background of Lord Zed, and so he goes back. And so he ends up going and uh, is to figure out this technique. Uh, and it's funny because he doesn't have this kind of boomerang-like weapon. Um, but uh, Ollie uses his like weapon as his boomerang-like weapon and is to break the, the necklace onto Zed. And so now Zed is going to go and try to beat down uh, Regal. And so Regal ends up kind of uh, vanishing off. And so eventually, Ollie is to figure out how to get all the other rangers uh, back up and kind of helping them because... Uh, Ollie's going to need all the help that he can get trying to take down Zed. Even teaming up with uh, the monsters that are to be involved in this episode, who are to be both uh, Brian Blast, which, God, I just... I no longer want to see this monster. I hate this monster. This monster looks like garbage, and you keep putting him in the episodes. <laughs> Uh, Wolfgang, I can tolerate, uh, even though I just, I'm getting a little, like, they use his same weakness from the other episode to do a callback to, to do the same thing in this episode to eventually just have, like, eventually be that, like, well, hey, like, Regal is to have made us uberly strong, which, again, that end result of it just kind of is like, eh, I like that. Uh, where the, the villains are seemingly more powerful than they were before. But anyways, so... What ends up, of course, happening is they Megazord it up. And they end up, of course, bringing the, the Megazord in. I'm just like, oh my god. Why can't you just do something other than the Megazord? But it's, it's a night show. It's freaking a night show themed show so you have to do a sword you can't do anything else you can't put in you can't give them like a cannon weapon you can't give them like a like a, uh give them kind of something that kind of has something to do with that time period like give them some kind of anything but a sword there's too much sword work in this show like have a shield that ends up also like doubling as like a, a captain america kind of thing where it kind of just freaking hits the people and takes them down that way uh do something with that maybe i don't know give give me something give me something other than what's the sword come on give me something else so but in this episode we have the sword who hits two of the monsters and wipes them out at the same time so i'm like okay i'm i'm okay with that but it's still it's a sword killing spree but uh, <laughs> you do a unique thing with the sword. So I go, ah, but I'm like, ah, but ah. it's this, it's the inner struggle. Uh, so eventually Void Knight is to like hope that uh, Zed is off uh, to eventually no longer be a threat again. Uh, and so Void Knight ends up chucking uh, Regal into uh into the whole uh, cage where they're like, well, maybe he's going to come back, and so maybe is Lord Zed. Uh, we also have an interesting moment where uh, in these episodes, eventually Void Knight is to take off his mask and is to talk to his... Uh, to his uh, technically... Uh, watered down wife <laughs> his watered down wife because <clears throat> she's just being held in this weird goofy cell and so you know what if the power rangers actually knew what void knight was trying to do they would probably actually help him 
I, I think that would be true. Where I feel like the Power Rangers eventually, if they like, they knew about Void Knight's wife, like they would probably help him. Like I don't, I think that like they could say it's like, well, <clears throat> but that's just another villain entity that they have to deal with. I'm like, yeah, so what? Like I'm sure that they would have tried to like help out somebody that's just kind of suspended in reanimation or whatever. Uh, like if they would have known what Void Knight was really just pushing all these sporks to do, then they would probably help them out. They wouldn't have felt like they needed to try to, like, steal all these Sporex from him, because what do the Power Rangers need Sporex for? Like, anyways. I think that's all that I had to say about this episode, and I think I'm going to get out of here, because I think I've spent enough time talking about the show. Uh... Any last thoughts of anything of these episodes? Uh, like, Jane ended up having that treadmill thing where eventually she was to get clocked by this one robot, uh, giving her the, uh, like, the thing of water and uh, eventually smacking a towelette into her face. Um, like, you know what? I thought that that was, like, a fun thing for those characters. Like, I didn't think it was at all cringe, like they forcibly tend to do with these characters. Like, it's really not their character's fault. It's the writing way of doing these characters. So, again, have these Power Rangers give pitches to Jane. Have that be the way they're consistently incorporated, both Jay Borg and Jane, how they're consistently incorporated in every episode. Have them just be, like, pitch people, and then eventually Jane can send them on their, their videos of whatever they're going to do for that day coming from these ideas like because obviously uh like right out of the early episodes uh i think uh the pink ranger amelia andrea amelia is amelia right uh i think she ended up saying that like she was to basically be given the exact same video that someone else had done before but they slightly tweaked it i'm like so Obviously, this girl's running out of ideas. It wouldn't be a good, interesting episode to have Jane come in here. Just be like, hey, uh, like, I have been running out of uh, ideas for, like, a year now. <laughs> and, like, I just continue to just give people the same kind of stuff to do over and over and over again. And it really is starting to hurt our, uh, our buzz blast feeds that, like, people are losing interest. Like, we need new ideas, and then, bam, there's how we can kind of open up uh, some kind of something. Is Dino If Dino Fury is going to go into a second season, which don't know if there's going to be that, uh, because some people might have actually come up with an interesting idea for a following season, heaven forbid, uh, maybe we'll actually have a tarot card Power Rangers season. Uh, that'll never happen. Anyway... And then eventually it will happen. I'm like, yeah, look who came up with that idea. Anyways, that was me. Uh, um, but yeah, so I think that's all I wanted to say for this episode. Uh, man, but there was some cringe stuff in here, but there always has to because Power Rangers cringes up their stories. Uh, it's not the actor's fault. It's the whoever is to like have them do this delivery it's the writer thing um i know power ranger shows are so hard and difficult to write for but man when i'm just churning out some interesting ideas that eventually it seems like they they play with here but like they just don't know how to deliver stuff well man uh but i'm gonna get out of here bye everybody bye everybody